We are talking to Gloucester Police Chief Ed Conley. This week, we're having a series of conversations addressing the next difficult months. Unemployment insurance is due to expire. The state moratorium on evictions and foreclosures has already expired, and the federal moratorium will soon. There's a positive news about the vaccine, but right now the COVID rate is surging. So, Chief Conley, as the, as the police chief of a small American city, what worries you about these next months? Well, the thing that we're focusing on right now here, and not that this is the, of course, not the only thing, just our, our sort of a lot of co having a lot of conversations right now about our, you know, there's a, there's a segment of our population that doesn't have stable housing, uh, nor they have stable employment. And when the bad weather comes here, what is our plan? And typically we have a plan. We usually leverage uh, surrounding communities and we have shelters. But with COVID, you know, there are some restrictions that have limited those bed spaces. Uh, so I, it's a lot of the other communities, uh, I've been in touch with the Salem police chief trying to figure out what they're doing there. They're all in the same, same kind of boat that we are. So, I'm, I mean, this is exactly why, I should say exactly why, but one of the reasons why the community impact unit was created to help solve these problems. So we've been working uh, with some other partners here. I can't, I can't really say now because it's still in the works what, what the solution for that might be. But that this is uh, certainly a top priority for the mayor's office. Uh, it's been conversations we've had with her. It's something that's very important to her to have figured out. So that's what we're doing. And you know, some of the stuff that we did leading up to uh, the winter months with the community impact unit, like we gave out backpacks with a number of items that someone who may be living outside uh, most of the time would need. We also use that as an opportunity to make contact and sort of get a sense of how many people we have and uh, you know, from, from time to time and their names and, and where they're likely staying so that we can make contact with them when the weather turns, turns worse. And we've been in touch with Gloucester Housing Authority and Action and um, all these other local organizations as well. And so is the, is the thinking with the, the, uh, the CIU to help steer people in those directions? Correct. Well, it's it's certainly a storefront resource, just like, I mean, Action Inc. has this figured out, right? I mean, they, they may not have the space right now, but they have the model for how do we engage this population. So it really is about CIU working hand in hand with Action Inc. and our other partners to problem solve. What CIU brings to the table, I think, is, uh, you know, it's, it's a uniform presence that we have our own storefront. People have become more and more comfortable walking into that storefront to engage the officers that are over there. Uh, and of course, we have Ace the Dog, which is, should be uh, even another draw to the uh, Community yeah. Impact Unit. But they also bring the ability to, uh, you know, this, like I said, the backpack program was a, was a huge success. That the data that we're able to collect, not only through the backpack program, but also police interactions, you know, patrol officers interacting with that population, we capture that data and we're able to use it in a positive way uh, with Action Inc. Chief, could you, I, for our viewers who don't know, could you just go into a little more detail about the Community Impact Unit, how it was founded, exactly where it is, and a little bit more about the backpacks? Sure, yeah. Uh, so Community Impact Unit stemmed from a couple of things. First of all, as you may remember, we had an angel program here in Gloucester that Gloucester received national attention for. And, and we, when I got here and started to learn about the angel program, I was interested in sort of merging that model and that philosophy with what we had been doing in Chelsea around a community, a community navigator problem, which I just, I thought that was more encompassing that it kind of swallowed up a, a larger at-risk population than, than just the angel program while still accomplishing the same, the same goal of keeping people alive, the same goal of harm reduction, the same goal of treatment over arrest. Uh, and so that's what we did and, we, and, and fortunately, uh, we were able to hire Tito Rodriguez, who I see as one of the one of the best uh, recovery coaches, at least on the East Coast. I, I'd be biased and probably say everywhere to help work alongside our police officers. And for those who don't know Tito, who uh, you know he's got a long history of, of, of as being a recovery coach, and not only just a recovery coach, but he's the trainer of the trainer of the trainer of the recovery coaches. And we hired him. He's a civilian, and he works in that office with uh, Lieutenant Nicastro and our two SROs. Um, and so their, their mission is to problem solve. It's really that simple. Come up with creative ways 
of solving our community problems here in Gloucester. And one of the ways that they came up with of engaging with the uh, population that doesn't always have stable housing here was this backpack program, which we received a grant from Leahy Hospital to uh, buy items like toothpaste and toilet paper and things like that that people who don't have stable housing may need on a day-to-day -day basis and put those into backpacks that they can carry around. And at the same time, that allowed us to collect some data and, 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 and most importantly, start to develop a rapport with people and make them comfortable coming to us and calling us for help when they need it. And that's just an example of what they do. They have a lot of other initiatives. They just spent last weekend stuffing a cruiser with uh, food for, for uh, people in need. Mm -hmm. And the Community Impact Unit is in the first floor of the Browns Mall at the corner of Main Street and Pleasant Street in downtown Gloucester. So Chief, now we're starting to see a, a dramatic rise in positive COVID cases uh, in the community. Um, where, what role does the police force have when, um, in the vaccine plan? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> None of us do, right? <laughs> uh, I, I don't, uh, the, what I know is what you know. And I really don't think uh, anybody has quite a sense yet. I mean, I, I believe the CDC just came out with guidance yesterday regarding prioritization for who gets uh, vaccinated first. Uh, there's still questions around how that happens pragmatically. We're just, we're not even at step one here. You know, we're at step minus four, I think, uh, <laughs> before it gets to us. Uh, certainly we, we uh, are standing by to assist in that. I mean, I, I think there are a lot of, questions uh, that some people may have, uh, a host of questions that they may have around the vaccine and who gets it first, do you have to get it, do I not have to get it, risks, all this sort of thing that are way outside the scope of uh, the police department for sure. Right. Are you, um, I know last spring you were having to have important conversations with the force about keeping themselves safe and I assume you're doing that all over again, right? We, we are, and it's unfortunate because I really felt, uh, you know, maybe naively so that we, we were in a good place here in Gloucester for a little while, um, and it's not a Gloucester problem. This is something that's the whole country is experiencing uh, for sure. I think we do an outstanding job here and compared to some of the places, not only in Massachusetts, but uh, in the country, you know, the health department here is just, they're on the money. We've, I can't get into detail, but we've certainly had some some instances here uh, with staff being involved with COVID and the health department and contact tracing in Gloucester, I think is, is outstanding. And their ability to take, when we have these high sort of spikes, then you see how long it takes to bring that spike right back down to a normal level. I mean, that's a testament to Karen Carroll and her staff over there. But what we do here is we have a sort of a, a, a fluid posture, right? So when, think we're in a sort of yellow reddish area we we posture uh staff in, in a different way we have a higher you know people wearing their masks and roll calls haven't been held inside the building since probably march last march uh but how we approach calls for service we encourage people who are in a higher level to make non-emergency calls by telephone and take, we'll take a report from them rather than call for an officer to respond uh but we still have a we still have a mission to accomplish at the end of the day, just like the fire department does, and we provide our staff with protective equipment to accomplish that mission. Well, and now, Chief, now that we're in the, the midst of the holiday craze, um, are there particular things that uh, you need to be chatting with the community about or warning the community about? Are there uh, you know, heightened awareness about scam risks, et cetera, et cetera? Well, sure. I mean, I just put out a press release maybe a week and a half ago about uh, you know, packages uh, being left on your front porch. Uh, certainly, I would encourage everybody to do a little research. Uh, whatever whatever delivery service they're using or whatever company they're buying from, they, they're usually alternatives. So if you're in a highly populated area where, you know, it's, it wouldn't be unusual for someone to say, step up onto your common porch, uh, you know, you might be at a higher risk of theft there as opposed to someone who lives uh, down a long driveway in a single home who for someone to kind of walk down there and be in a place where they didn't belong without a really good reason, you know, you're, you're a little bit, of, it's a different risk profile. So I encourage everybody, and I think that press release had a few uh, recommendations around that. So that's certainly, that's certainly uh, one thing. And I think you're going to continue to hear the guidance, just like we did in, for Thanksgiving about, about people gathering together, 
I mean, this is it's clearly having an impact. There are warnings about you know families being in large groups, and then some people follow those you know warnings and, and take them seriously, and some people for whatever reason don't. Uh, and we see, I mean, it's the the cause and effect is is pretty well established, I think now about what happened. So I've just I tell people to to follow the guidance that they're getting, follow the science. So last question, uh, we, as I said, we are sort of focusing on the safety nets in the community, the different organizations that people can turn to for support. What do you think of as the safety nets in this community? Well, I've said many times, uh, and this is why CIU works so well here, because they're not, they're not a standalone unit, right? Their, their job and problem solving mission involves leveraging all the organizations that we have here in Gloucester. Uh, we're also very fortunate to have a mayor and uh, city council who prioritize this type of, uh, of safety net. So certainly Action Inc. is the, if, if there's one uh, organization here in Gloucester that's not part of the city government that I think of, it, it's, a, it's Action Inc. I mean, they really address all, all the problems, uh, kind of wraparound services for people uh, that would need them. And I would encourage anybody that's that's feeling, whether it's they're feeling sh worried about their their, their heat or their oil for the, going into the colder months. I encourage anybody feeling that way to reach out to Action Inc. Great. And Chief, this won't air in time, but uh, as we are taping this, ladies night is tonight. <laughs> what extra precautions are the force taking for that? See, that's a loaded question. <laughs> that's, the, that's the biggest retail night of the year. But <laughs> Even without COVID, that's a loaded question. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not drink white wine out in public still, even with COVID. Okay. No, uh, I know I, 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 there's no doubt that this has been a, a, a very stressful time for small business, particularly here in Glosses. So I think people can, can be out, they can be safe if they follow some simple guidelines. They can simply wear their mask. Uh, if you know it's windy enough out, people can maintain some distance. They can not spend a lot of time in, in particular stores uh, where it's crowded, or they can just wait outside until the occupancy. But I would encourage everybody to, you know, certainly shop local. My wife has assured me since we moved to Gloucester a few months ago that she, everybody in our family is getting a gift that will be bought on Cape Ann. Uh, so, and she's been very excited to do that. We were out uh, last weekend in downtown uh, Gloucester and Main Street. We were over in Rockport. Uh, buying things, I just cover my eyes when the register. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she was she was spotted in she was spotted at Blue River Diamond, so you might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love the idea of that. I mean, I love the idea of sort of challenging yourself to find a gift for everybody that you plan on buying a gift for here on Cape Ann. You know, not just here in Gloucester. I, and I and I, I'm sure you. I have no doubt that it can be done. Mm. Yeah. Challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great points, Chief. Uh, glad yeah. to chat with you once again. Uh, be well, stay safe, and we would love to chat with you after the holidays. I'd like that too. And if I don't see you, have a happy holiday for sure. You too. Thank and you. Safe. Thank you.